Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Member of Pathways Restoration Ministry tells how controversial leader Kevin Smith Insurance became policies. Challenges facing government's house-to-house -house vaccination program. Reports, Reggae Girls head coach faces serious allegations. I'm Anthony Lugg. Here are the details. As the saga deepens into happenings at the Pathways International Ministries in St. James, a congregant disclosed that he was directed by now deceased pastor Kevin Smith to place him as trustee on all his insurance policies. The man, who is 26 year old, was speaking on Radio Jamaica's hotline with host Emily, Emily Shields this morning. Now to protect his identity, only his first name, Corey, was used during the interview. O'Shane Masters reports. He was stabbed and shot in the back on the night of October 17 at the Pathways International Restoration Ministry. Says Kevin Smith had gained the trust of his members in a bid to have them add him to their insurance policies. Corey, who was a member of a Smith-led ministry from 2014, says Smith was put on his policy in 2017 and on his children's insurance policy in March of this year. What was supposed to be his role? Um, in the investment that passed away, he would have uh, that get the, the, the payout, which is over a million dollars each. Yeah. And um, he would get that money. So what he claims is that um, in the event that anything happened, yes. our children could get stuff. Right. Right. So they would benefit from the money because it would be given to him as a trustee because both my children are under the age of 18. The 26-year-old says it was easy to trust Smith as he portrayed himself as a righteous man, but his true colours showed on October 17. The deception at the highest level, um, persons of their life, thinking they're injured, yes. and other persons um, is in trauma at, at this moment. Yes. It's not an easy thing um, as a person is faced with, but everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Yes. What he did, he, used, he knew that he loved God and he played on that. As it relates to the events of the day, he said he would not talk about it as it is traumatizing. However, he would like to have his children in his care. Following the ritualized killings of two other church, some 14 children were placed into state care. I know my children are in state care and everything. It's just, it is too much. It's just too much for me. Yeah. It's, this, this person that destroyed our life, yeah. destroyed our lives, destroyed so many families, you know, mm -hmm. uh, leave a lot of people grieving right now. But it's, just, it's just not easy. I understand. Are you getting counseling? Uh, we haven't started counseling as yet. We should be doing some counseling. Yeah, but you really do need it, don't you? Yeah, really do. Machine Masters, TV News. To other news. The recently launched House to House vaccination program has gotten off to a rocky start. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton has pointed to widespread resistance. He was speaking following a tour of the Filippo Baptist Church and Town Center in Spanish Town, St. Catherine yesterday. Sandy Williams reports. There's a popular proverb which says you can lead a horse to water but you can't make him drink it. Meaning you can give someone an opportunity but not force them to take it. And that has been the experience of community health aides in the house to house vaccination program. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton laments that the program which started on Monday has been met with resistance from some citizens. But right now we're at a stage where people are uncertain some are outrightly hesitant. Uh, it's no longer an issue of where the vaccine is available because it's available in many locations. So you have people raising issues about, can I take the vaccine if I am breastfeeding? The answer is yes, you can. Um, will the vaccine affect my getting pregnant? The answer is no. In fact, it is good to take the vaccine if your intention is to get pregnant or if you're breastfeeding. Protection for you and your child. Dr. Tufton says the health aides have been trained to deal with some of the concerns raised by the citizens. We have embarked on a program of reminder training, specifically around the COVID vaccine, and really trying to get them motivated, prepared to go out there and to do the house to house. They are a loyal, dedicated set of workers. They have been trained already and they do several things. These trainings are intended to focus on COVID-19 and the host-to-host that we will have to depend on them to do. 
But he says despite the sensitization about the safety of the vaccines, some people remain adamant about not taking the jab and may even get aggressive towards the health aids. Um, and what I've said to them basically and is that, listen, we're not here to, to save everybody if there are some people who are bent on not being saved. There are some people who are just going to object and maybe be aggressive about it. We walk away from those persons. But we do believe that we have an obligation as public health to give everybody an opportunity and to try to speak to as many persons as possible. But he says there are others who have been taking advantage of the program. I don't have any data, but I know it's going fairly well based on what I've been told generally by the parishes, the nine or so parishes. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. Jamaica should start administering the Pfizer second dose next Monday. This after the arrival of some 45,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccines last night. Shamela Pullen tells us more. Some 85,000 Jamaicans, including children, have been waiting to get their second dose of the Pfizer vaccine. Now that wait is over. Wednesday, we saw the arrival of 45,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine, courtesy of the government of Suriname. We are very grateful for that. Uh, this now puts in stock this amount for us to begin the scheduling of appointments. As at 10 a.m. Thursday, persons waiting for their second dose can now schedule their appointments via the online portal at www.moh.gov.jm or call the vaccination center at 888-1LOVE, that is 888-663-5683. They are also reminded to take a government-issued identification. Children must state their school ID or a letter from a justice of the peace and their vaccination card to the vaccine centers. Later this weekend, maybe Friday or Saturday, we will see the arrival of 100,000 doses from the COVAX facility, facility that we pay into, and that will therefore take care of all second doses and we begin to administer on Monday, November 1st, to those who have set their appointments. Beyond that, Dr. Tufton says the country is expected to get an additional shipment of the Pfizer vaccine from the United States soon. And that will therefore give us a number of doses to do second doses and also to go to the priority group of our children or students between 12 and 18 years. I want to thank all those who have been a part of this process and just to encourage Jamaicans to get vaccinated so we can get back to life. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. The COVID-19 positivity rate has increased to 14.8%, an increase of 7.3%. It comes as the country recorded 136 new cases of the virus from 1,470 test samples. The overall case count now stands at 88,666. There was also an increase in hospitalizations. 317 people have been hospitalized with a respiratory illness, up from the previous 297. 20 people are critically ill, while 29 are severely ill. There are 28,490 active cases on the island. 180 people have recovered in the last 24 hours, bringing the island's recovery rate to 57,362. In the meantime, seven additional deaths have been recorded for the period August 5 to October 26. The death toll is now 2,199. And it's now time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to Midday News and thanks for staying with us. Education Minister Fable Williams says an assessment will have to be done before more schools can be granted approval to open for face-to-face -face classes. She was speaking on Paul 106's morning agenda. Education Minister Fable Williams says a risk assessment will be conducted during the phased reopening of classes to determine the speed at which more schools can reopen. Stakeholders in the education sector are now raising concerns ahead of the resumption on November 8. President of the Association of Principals of Secondary Schools, Lynn Wright, believes all public schools should be open with staggered days for larger populations. But Minister Williams says the ongoing health crisis accounts for the crippling effect on the education system. The ministry cannot take a decision on its own. We are in a health crisis. We have to be guided by the Ministry of Health and Wellness or positivity rate has been high, 
high, high. It's only coming down now. The Education Minister also responded to criticisms about the full reopening of private schools over what obtains in the public school system. A majority, maybe 80% or more of their children um, get driven to school in private, uh, private vehicles that are arranged for them. Um, so it is not the same apples to apples comparison as our public schools. As for calls by the opposition for clear guidance on the trigger points for the partial reopening and total lockdown of schools. You know, I'm not working with a definitive number right now um, in terms of the positivity rate. But again, we speak very often with the Minister of Health and Wellness um, and we seek guidance from them. Um, I, you know, I would say if, if God forbid we start on a, on a fourth spike, um, then we can expect changes. It's being reported that the key suspect in Haitian President Jovenel Moise's assassination remains in legal limbo in Jamaica. Now, according to a report in the Miami Herald newspaper, the Haitian government is working to extradite Mario Palacios, the former Colombian military officer who was found recently in Manchester. More from Kimon Witter. The newspaper quoted Haiti's foreign minister, Claude Joseph, as saying he discussed the extradition with Jamaica's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Kamina Johnson-Smith, and Colombia's Vice President, Marta Ramirez. There was talk in Haiti that Mr. Palacios might be extradited to the U.S., which has been working with Haitian authorities to bring the assassins to justice. But because Mr. Palacios is not wanted on charges of committing a crime in the U.S. or Jamaica, where he's been held on an immigration violation, his fate remains uncertain. The Miami Herald says this is the same case with Colombia. Colombia's defense minister, Diego Aponte, told the newspaper that his country has no criminal notice for Mr. Palacios. Two men are dead following a motor vehicle crash along the Winston Jones Highway last evening. They have been identified as 28-year-old Odane Hansen and 36-year-old Marvin Thompson, both of St. Elizabeth addresses. Reports are that about 7 p.m., the men were traveling in a CRV headed westerly when it tried overtaking a line of traffic and crashed into a truck traveling in the opposite direction. The driver of the truck was not harmed. Now, in the meantime, head of the Mandeva Traffic Division, Sergeant Florizel Williams, is urging motorists to drive within the speed limit. He also warns that section of the highway is poorly lit, making it difficult for motorists to judge the distance or the speed of oncoming vehicles. And the management of the chicken farm in Rosen St. Mary, owned by politician Damien Crawford, has until later this week to implement all the recommendations which were provided by the parish's health department or face the possibility of closure. Now, earlier this month, Residents complained of a fly nuisance, O'Shane Masters reports. When our team visited the farm following the initial complaints on October 5, there was an increase in the fly population. This, the farm manager Sadiq Khan told us was due to a malfunctioning equipment on the farm. On Tuesday, we revisited the farm following more complaints from residents in the area. But the farm manager said there was a reduction in the fly population due to the upgrading and fixing of a number of important machines. Chief Public Health Inspector for the parish, Rupert Stevens, in a telephone conversation yesterday, told me that based on the recommendations that were made to the management team, about 80 to 90 percent of the work has been completed. Uh, one of the major concerns now is to have the drying house for the, for the waste adequately screened to prevent any entry or exit of flies that could um, cause breeding. Hence, the farm will be under constant monitoring from the St. Mary Health Department. We have to keep monitoring what is happening at the farm because based on the nature of the setup that is there in that raw chicken waste is being generated continuously, it has to be managed properly in order that, you know, there is a guarantee that the, the fly breeding will, will, will be under control. Some major work has been done by him, and he has until tomorrow to finish the screening of the drying house for the waste. However, the possibility of closure is still present. 
an official notice has been served on the owner. This means that if there are conditions existing after the time that he has been given to abate that nuisance, then further actions can be taken against, against the owner. When we contacted Mr. Stevens this morning, he said the health department would be extending the time period given for all recommendations to be implemented to Friday, October 29. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. And for the latest in the financial world, here's O'Shane Masters with a Business Minute. Caribbean Cement suffered a plunge in profit during the July to September quarter. The company's net profit was $43.7 million compared to $1.2 billion during the corresponding period last year. Revenue for the quarter was also slightly down, amounting to $5.5 billion versus $5.8 billion in 2020. Caribbean Cement says the reduced revenue was due to lower sales associated with the heavy rainfall and harsh weather conditions during the quarter. When Dalco's parent company, Russian aluminium producer Rusal, yesterday said its third quarter sales fell by 9.2% year on year to 915,000 tons due to strained transport systems in Russia and abroad. Surging sea shipping costs have prompted Chinese manufacturers to send more goods to Europe by rail via Russia creating bottlenecks and straining Russia's railway network. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Machine Masters. It's now time for the top regional and international stories. Here's Sandy Williams. In the region, Bermuda's COVID-19 death toll has reached 100, with two more fatalities linked to the virus. However, health officials say active cases have fallen to double figures and some restrictions are to be eased next week. Health Minister Kim Wilson last night announced 12 new cases from 3,450 samples. Active cases fell from 127 on Monday to 99, back to the numbers seen in early August before surge. 21 people remain hospitalized with six in intensive care. On the international scene, Russia's capital, Moscow, has put new COVID-19 restrictions in place to try and contain a worsening outbreak. The measures are taking effect as Russia is seeing daily highs in infections and deaths. The nation has been sent home from work. There is no lockdown. Here in Moscow, the whole idea is that the restrictions that are being placed on people are to try to break the cycle of infection rather than lock people down because the essential issue for this country like so many other is to try to keep the economy the wheels of the economy turning and from the russian perspective the show must go on and that's the top regional and international stories i'm sandy williams head now to a quick break when we return we'll have your midday sports report simon preston is standing by welcome back it's now time for midday sports i'm simon preston British newspaper The Guardian is reporting that reggae girls head coach Hubert Busby has been accused by a former player of attempting to solicit sex from her during his time as head coach of the Vancouver Whitecaps women's team. The series of incidents was alleged to have taken place from 2010 to 2011. American defender Mallory Enoch is the player who has come out 10 years later expressing discomfort to how she was treated by Busby. Busby has denied these allegations. TVJ Sports understands that senior members of the Reggae Girl squad are expected to speak with Busby on the situation sometime this weekend. Meanwhile, the Jamaica Football Federation said in a statement on Thursday that they plan to discuss the matter with Busby next week, Tuesday. Busby has been the head coach of the Reggae Girls since 2020. Meanwhile, the Reggae Girls have remained third in the October edition of the CONCACAF Rankings Index. The United States continues to lead the index, followed by Canada, while Mexico, Trinidad and Tobago and Costa Rica round out the top six. The Reggae Girls were held to a nil-all draw by Costa Rica in a friendly international in Fort Lauderdale last week. The 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup qualifiers are slated to kick off in February, with the CONCACAF region having four automatic spots to the World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. The Jamaicans will face Bermuda, Grenada, the Cayman Islands and the Dominican Republic in the first round of the qualifiers. To cricket we go now as Sri Lanka posted 154 for 6 off their 20 overs against Australia in match 22 of the ICC T20 World Cup in Dubai. Kusal Pereira and Charith Asalanka top scored with 35 runs each. 
Adam Zampa, Pat Cummings and Mitchell Stark took two wickets each for Australia. At sports time, Australia had reached 140 for three after 16 overs, needing another 15 runs for victory of 24 balls. Sri Lanka are searching for their second win of the tournament, while Australia are playing their first match of the competition. The West Indies will next be in action on Friday against Bangladesh in Sharjah. And that is where we pull up stumps for now for your midday sports report. I'm Simon Preston. Anthony, it is over to you. Thank you very much, Simon. And that's the midday news. I'm Anthony Log. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.